people, 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 people. Que pasa, suck, pase, what they do. Now this video is called it happen again, it happened once more again because we see that a 15-year-old schoolboy, he was slapped away by some G-U-N-M-E-N and he attended the Ascot High School and his name is Jeremy and Palmer and based on the popo information it is said that at about 7 p.m. this is when this incident actually occurred and based on information it is said that Mr. Jeremy was coming from some football game he went to practice and when he came by the house a man asked him to retrieve a bike we are speaking about a motorbike However, it seemed like this person that asked him to retrieve the motorbike knew that some G-U-N-M-E-N -E were at his house waiting for him. So people, it seems like this man must have done something wrong and he knew that the people him came back for the payment. He knew that they came back to take away his life. However, like a coward that he is, he asked the 15-year-old youth to go and retrieve his bike. However, when this 15-year-old youth went by his house to pick up the bike, he was slapped. He picked up a couple of cans all over him body now people let me ask you a question as it pertains to these new millennial so-called bad men so-called g-u-n-m-e-n don't they make sure that whenever they go on a hit they make sure so them have the right person because people will see that this is a bad case of mistaken identity because they went for one person and because they are so coward the first person that they saw they automatically assumed that this was their target and them slapped with a 15 year old youth so let me ask these waste men, so-called G-U-N-M-E, in a rhetorical question. Shouldn't you actually make sure that your target is a target that you get? Is it that you go for anybody and anybody that you see anybody is a target, regardless if that is the person that you're targeting or whatever? People, let me know in the comment section if that makes a lot of sense. Now people, like I've said in many videos, it seems like these waste men in Jamaica, these so-called bad men, these so-called G-U-N-M-E-N -E in Jamaica are taking away a lot of productive persons. We are speaking about elderly persons, we are speaking about persons in their middle age, and even worse, we are speaking about some teenager and also some juvenile and some little picnic. People, based on what we see going on in Jamaica, it seems like Jamaica is getting mad sick, the head no good. Jamaica is like a maniac place. Jamaica is like an asylum because we see that they are taking away even persons that are productive. We are speaking about students. We are speaking about just about anybody. It seems as if it is an equal opportunity slap away place because this youth is said to be a good student and he is also a person that likes the DJ and likes the art. People, we are speaking about a very tragic situation, point blank and period. So anyways, people, that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that. And like me say, it is just my views and opinion. It is not the gospel. Your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Bless up. Now the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that the UK immigration, we are speaking about home office, they have halted the deportation of 50 Jamaicans back from London, we are speaking about UK to Jamaica on the 11th of February 2020, we are speaking about tomorrow morning. And based on the information, it is said that this halt or delay took place a couple of hours before the scheduled flight, we are speaking about 6 o'clock in the morning, we are talking about London, we are talking about UK time. So people, the moral of the story is that we see that these detainees are lucky or they basically got their fate kind of delayed. So people, hopefully they can actually get the legal representation and the time that they need to fight their case effectively. Now we saw that a lot of Jamaicans were protesting and also some other Caribbean nationals and also some white people in London. We are speaking about the actual scheduled deportation flight that was scheduled for 11th of February 2020, which would have been tomorrow. However, here are the grounds in which this flight was delayed or halted. People, take a listen. Number one. Now, based on the information, it is said that one of the serious grounds why this flight was halted was because of the fact that the inmates or the detainees did not have access to SIM cards for their phone. So, therefore, they could not have reached out to their family or legal representation. So, people, we are speaking about legal grounds, point blank and period. Now, our next legal grounds in which this flight was halted is because they were waiting on a report. We are speaking about the controversial Windrush report, which should have been ready from the middle of 2019. Now, people, you see that we are in 2020. We are speaking about in the second month. So, people, that is also grounds for it to be halted, point blank and period. 
Now, the third grounds is that politicians in UK, they are saying that it is morally wrong, it is ethically wrong to deport persons that have been living in the UK since they were like two or three year old. As a matter of fact, I think the new rule or the new law is that if that person came to the UK before the age of 13, they should not be deported. Now, people in all of this, we noticed that we did not see the government of Jamaica say anything. They did not have an input. But people, like I've always said, the government of Jamaica is like a puppet on a string. As it pertains to UK, as it pertains to the US and any kind of first world country, they are always going to sell out their country. And people, based on some information that I heard, it is said that each time that somebody is deported from the UK, we are talking about London, the Jamaican government is given £2,000. Some people, we are speaking about 50 persons, we are speaking about £100,000. And people, the truth and the facts that if that information is correct, when these persons are actually deported from the UK, they don't receive a cent from the government of Jamaica. They are just put out on the street for basically fend for themselves. Some people, that is why a lot of persons get crazy. That is why a lot of person commit all sorts of crime in Jamaica so the moral of the story is that we see that the government of Jamaica is taking back these person and they don't have the facility they don't have any kind of programs in place for them so people what do you expect it is going to be a recipe for a disaster point blank and period so anyways people that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that and like me say it is just my views and opinion it is not the gospel your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine but let me know what you think in the comment section bless up now the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that the cat and mouse game as it pertains to the popo and the taxi men and drivers of public passenger vehicle it continues and um, people this is the fourth incident we are speaking about an incident that took place in st james we are talking about montego bay because people if you remember there was an incident in new kingston in which a popo basically got run over by a taxi man and also there was a next incident close to coronation market in which a popo also slapped away a taxi man and people. A next incident also occurred in Spanish town, we are speaking about in St. Catherine, in which a driver of a public passenger vehicle also ran over a police lady upon a motorcycle. So people, we are speaking about the fourth incident. We are speaking about the fourth incident since 2020. So people, that is a bad statistic, whichever way you want to look at it. Now, based on the Popo report and information, it is said that this Popo was doing his job. He was directing traffic when he pulled over a minibus man and he told the minibus man to basically pull over to the side. However, it seems like the minibus driver disobeyed his order and when the Popo tried to stop him, he basically licked him down and the Popo was taken to the place of recovery where he basically was nursing some injuries to his foot. However, he was released from the hospital. And also, based on the information, it is said that after the minibus man tried to run over the popo, he basically blazed up some can in the direction of the bus. Now, people, when you think about this situation, it is called too wrong does not make a right. We see how reckless these taxi drivers and these minibus drivers are in Jamaica because he should have learned from the last incident in which the Popo basically slapped with the taxi man and he should have also realized that he has innocent passengers in his vehicle. So therefore one of the passengers could have got K-I-L-L-E-D point blank and period. However, it seems as if he only has his own self-interest at heart. And as it pertains to the Pope, I understand that this is an extreme circumstance, but he should have realized that whenever he fires his weapon, he is always going to endanger all of the passengers in that vehicle. And even though his intended target, and even though the person that tried to arm him was indeed the bus driver, he should also recognize that there were also other passengers in the vehicle, and him could have basically take away, we are speaking about an innocent person, point blank and period. So people, the moral of the story is this. We are speaking about some very reckless person. We are speaking about the drivers. We are speaking about the taxi drivers. And we are also speaking about the minibus drivers. We are speaking about persons that are driving public passenger vehicles. They are very reckless. And likewise, the popo, he is very unprofessional because he should have known better. Because he was supposed to be professionally trained. Point blank and period. So people, the lesson to be learned in all of this is that we see that these taxi drivers and these minibus drivers, 
they've been getting a green light we are speaking about with all the corruption and bribery as it pertains to the popo and we see that a lot of these minibus and taxis are also owned by the popo so therefore they basically brought them bad and now it has gotten out of hand and now they are trying to curb it so people like them say it gone bad from morning and now that it is getting extreme they are crying wolf they are crying and acting as if they don't know what is the reason so people until jamaica can basically get a hold of their traffic system we're in persons with hundreds or thousands of tickets are actually incarcerated pick up some time and actually afraid for drive it is always going to be like this and also as it pertains to these passengers that are always encouraging these drivers that are always doing all sorts of stupid things on the street because they want to reach wherever they are going fast people you see that your life is in jeopardy because obviously these drivers they don't care about themselves they don't care about rules and regulation and worse they don't care about you point blank and period so anyways people that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that and like me say it is just my views and opinion it is not the gospel your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine but let me know what you think in the comment section bless up